Hey guys, this is Jake Machaney with Unknown Munitions here with Ken Trapp from Salmon River Solutions and today we are here to show you how to install a muzzle brake, at least a self-timing muzzle brake. Generally a, a non-self-timing brake is going to be installed by your gunsmith, timed by your gunsmith. Uh, today we're here to show you how to install any type, really any type of self-timing brake, not just the, the pro lineup. So Ken is the master manufacturer and uh, he's installed his share of brakes, so we're going to let him take it over. Yeah, all right. So when you get your brake, it's pretty much going to come just like this. The nut threaded up against there. So you start. So you want to make sure your timing nut off. is all the way seated up against your brake. Just to show how this functionally actually works. So bottom's up right there. That's not timed right. Hold that in place. Rotate those slightly past. Tighten that up, and you leave just a small amount for that to cam over when you tighten it. So, because we're running dissimilar metals, uh, titanium brakes, we also recommend it with our stainless brakes. Uh, we recommend Loctite. Don't Loctite the timing nut threads. That doesn't need Loctite. Down, down in that hole there. Yeah. Definitely no Loctite there. So, just some Loctite on the top. I'm not actually going to. Well, like, well, like three drips. That yeah, that would work. Three drips. Three drips of Loctite. Okay. So then I'll use this one. Uh, titanium is a little soft, so use a gaffer's tape we have here. Wrap that around there a few times. So this is going to protect the brake, so you don't damage it when you actually tighten it with a crescent wrench. Mm -hmm. So thread this one on, and we'll actually time this one. So I'm just going to get it relatively close. And you got to you may have to play with it a little bit to figure out how much extra angle to leave yourself when you go to tighten it up to get kind of the right torque. There's not really a torque spec. We would just say uh, the right torque spec would be the one where the brake doesn't loosen up on you. You know, that could kind of vary. I would say, you know, there's probably a foot pounds range that's acceptable, but really you just want to make sure the brake's not going to back off on you. And it can come loose over time. I mean, it happens to me, even me installing my own brakes, I can have a brake come loose. If you start to see strange behavior from your rifle and you're going through all your checks, tightening up screws, make sure you check your muzzle brake too. Just put your hand, if you can break it loose with your hand, it's not tight enough. Yep. Yeah, so next we're going to make sure the rifle is sitting level. So throw a level on there. And this is, the, this is the scope leveling kit from Defensive Edge. We carry these on the website, but this is an awesome tool. It's all we use in the shop. They come with a couple other levels, but these are really the two that we use. That one's going to sit on your pick rail or any flat part of the rifle. And then you're going to make sure you level your rifle. And then we'll use this guy on the top of the brake. We're going to get just slightly past, make the nut, make sure the nut's snug. You can see how it's high on this side. Righty tighty lefty loosey, right? Mm -hmm. And you definitely don't need to over crank this. You're not, you're not trying to. Oh yeah. That's pretty much it. There you go. Yeah, and then just eyeball it, make sure everything's level. And it doesn't need to be, you know, within a tenth of a degree type of level. Level is level and uh, should be good to go. Yeah, that's it. Very easy and, I mean, once you've done one, you can probably do a whole install in under a minute. Yeah, some other muzzle brakes may have uh, flats in different places, but generally you just need one place, whether it be on the nut or whether it be on the body of the brake, one place that you can put a wrench on in order to get that to apply that torque. Yeah. yeah. We've had people ask about hex nuts. Aesthetically, we can do hex nuts, but there's no actual reason that we functionally need hex nuts yeah. because all this nut is doing is allowing you to use the threads to space the brake out to get the correct timing. I prefer the smooth nut anyway. But yeah, make sure, you, make sure this gap right here between the nut and the brake itself is super tight. Don't have a big gap right there. That's not the way the brake is intended to function. Uh, you're kind of turning it into a tuner of sorts at that point. Yeah, they're, they're, these are 5 24 threads. So at most, you would have a 48 thousandths gap because that's a full rotation at, at uh, 24. This, this is a machinist talk. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Max gap of 48 thou. If you're going past that, you can bring it in a few threads. 
Well, if you guys have any issues installing a pro brake or just need some more information on the pro brake line, uh, you can reach out to us at sales at unknown munitions.com, uh, Ken or salmon river solutions at gmail.com. And thank you.